our last talk for this session is going to be by uh, Jonathan Liflander. Okay, so while Dave is focusing on the general framework, what this paper does is it focuses on specifically scheduling work for agglomeration. So a lot of applications statically schedule um, certain work units in their application to be scheduled on the GPU to agglomerate them, and this work focuses on setting the performance of dynamically scheduling these work units. So we assume that our work is over decomposed in objects. So you have this fine-grained task parallelism that uh, you get in Charm++. And hopefully, you know, the way you've decomposed this, this is ideal for the CPU. You have overlap of communication and computation. But GPUs rely on basically the opposite. They need massive data parallelism. So fine grains, grains in this case actually decrease performance. And so and one of the reasons is because kernel instantiation has substantial overhead. There's also memory copy overhead and all, you know, all the overheads associated with moving stuff to the GPU. So the reduced overhead, you can actually combine these fine grain work units for the GPU. And you may delay the work by combining these if you have to work for, wait for more work units, but that delay may be insignificant if the work is low priority. So the terminology I'm going to use is when I talk about agglomeration, I'm just talking about the composition of some distinct work units. Static agglomeration is defined as the, a fixed number of work units are agglomerated, basically depend, using application-specific knowledge to combine those in the best way the application knows how. Dynamic agglomeration is varying this number of work units uh, at runtime. So based on what the runtime sees as the available work, et cetera, whether the processor's gone idle in terms of overlapping, you know, copy, et cetera, it can make a more um, introspective decision on whether to um, agglomerate work now or wait for more work units to arrive. So in the system, we basically have a work unit pool for each CPU and, and a bunch of CPUs and a schedule that manages these. So in the Charm++ model, every uh, CPU has a queue of work units um, that arrive, or messages that arrive that you're going to execute. And what we have added is we have added an accelerator FIFO. And the idea is when work units come in and, they're be and they've been earmarked for the accelerator, so we explicitly study the case where um, the work for the accelerator has been tagged. They go into the accelerator FIFO, and then at some point, our runtime system decides when we have, um, uh, when enough have arrived, and we uh, bundle those together and then ship them off to a GPU. So, to test this, the interface is very simple. The user calls schedule work, that puts it in the FIFO. That's all the user does, and at some point, the system, when it decides it's appropriate, calls agglomerate work, creates that bundle, and ships it off to the accelerator. So for this work, we're not, um, we focus on the agglomeration. And so the programmer has a lot of responsibility. They have to write the GPU kernel that does the agglomeration. Um, they have to create an offset array, as we call it. And basically, when all the tasks get combined, their inputs you know, may be different lengths, so we have no idea where they start and stop. And so for that kernel to execute properly, they need to have the offsets for each uh, chunk of work. And so this offset array just stores the offsets for the task beginning and end um, to the contiguous data arrays. And the system decides you know, what work to execute and when to execute it. And so the way the scheduler manages this is there's some application messages of various priority. But then there's higher priority. So we have high priority uh, GPU message compared to a low priority agglomeration message. And this is a way of using the Charm++ runtime priorities to manage the grouping. So at, when they're high priority GPU messages, they are constantly being put into the FIFO. And then at some point, either when we reach memory limits or when um, this lower priority agglomeration message sh shows up and is executed because all high pri higher priority ones are gone, um, the agglomeration um, takes place. So when the FIFO receives, uh, reaches a size limit, what we'll, I just said, based on memory limitations are agglomerated. And um, we also enqueue this low priority message that causes agglomeration at some point. And so the inputs look like this. If we have, if we have some chunk of work some tasks that requires two inputs. Um, we have some variable size inputs and an output. And so the agglomerated data is 
in these continuous buffers and the offset arrays point into these at various points. So the agglomerated kernel can access the appropriate portion and do the appropriate work based on that offset. So first case study I'll look at is molecular 2D, which is a um, simplified um, uh, MD interaction with cutoff in two dimensions. And so we have cells that we execute on the CPU. And to study agglomeration explicitly, we map all the interactions to the GPU. And this is the interaction kernel. So um, just to show like the overhead we have to add when you're writing the kernel for a very simple kernel. So we're not study, so we're not GPU experts, or at least I'm not. So we didn't write, you know, highly tuned kernels that, you know, use texture memory, et cetera. Instead we just use the um, re you know the regular memory and we have basically this one line of code we have to add, which looks into the begin and end offset arrays, which will pick up the appropriate chunk for those for the particle-particle interactions that need to take place for that task. And so if we look at the performance on the CPU and then the GPU with and without agglomeration, we get a good speed up use, uh, using the GPU and we get more, even more speed up by agglomerating the work. And the interesting thing to note, I'm going to skip that graph, is this is um, adjusting the virtualization. So the number of particles per u work unit. If we don't use agglomeration, note that as we make the, wor the work units more fine-grained, that's this end of the graph, execution time is hurt a lot more because we're not sufficiently using the GPU. But even when they're fine-grained, we're able to tolerate a lot finer uh, grain work units because we're effectively agglomerating them in the system. And also, the best point here, which is around 490, is different than the best point over here, which is around 1,400 or so. So we can tolerate a finer grain work unit, and we don't have to adapt our work unit size to match the GPU. Instead, we could use what was better for the CPU and still get uh, you know, even better performance out of the GPU. Um, yeah, this is actually particle pairs, I believe. Yeah. Okay. And then the other thing is we now compare um, some static agglomeration packet size, so fixing what that size will be in the beginning of the execution. So the application selects that and then we execute with that versus keeping it dynamic. And my scale doesn't start at zero, but we, stu we still get some performance gain no matter what um, static size we pick. The dynamic wins. Then quickly, second case study is LU factorization without pivoting. And since I already explained LU, I don't have to do that. Um, so on the CPU, we keep the diagonal factorization and triangular solves. On the GPU, we ship off the matrix matrix multiplies. And here's the same graph. For LU, again, agglomeration provides better performance because we're amortizing the overheads of copying and kernel instantiation. And in this case, um, if you fix the static size in LU, you end up bundling together work units that have lower and higher priority, um, which is which hurts the execution a lot. Whereas if you let it re if you let it be fully dynamic, it performs much better because you don't have this bad coupling that the static gets. And so conclusion for both benchmarks, um, agglomerating work increases performance. It doesn't have to be application specific. And statically scheduling work is difficult, like in the case of LU, because our LU has like infinite look ahead. Choosing which packets to uh, join together is tough. You, you don't want to end up joining work units together that will actually like, cause the program to hang. And so it's tough to encode that logic in your application, and a dynamic runtime system can, and they can you know, do this for you and get better performance. Um, and any questions? So you said that for LU, you don't want to uh, do the combining statically. 
Yes. Right, because it might cause deadlock. How does the run time? How does the runtime system know which ones to agglomerate so as not to cause deadlock? Right. So instead of fixing the size, it just it it dynamically agglomerates basically whatever comes its way until it either reaches some limit or it becomes idle, as in that low message priority uh, message gets executed. Also so in that some flushing scheme also going on. Well, no, so you don't need a flushing scheme because that message will always be in the queue, that low priority message. And so if, you know, if the program goes idle and there are things in that accelerator FIFO, then the work is executed on the GPU. So that's basically a flush rate right, to the y GPU? Yeah, oh. you can see it as an idle flush. Yeah. Can you go back to slide 13? 13. I think it was 13, but we'll see. Yeah, okay, this oh, yeah. one. Um, so dynamically scheduled agglomeration is always at that fixed point, or is that just one experiment? Um, oh, I see. That's so, so yeah, that's one experiment, and okay. the other ones are different experiments with the static. Right, yeah, and, so. and on the previous slide when you said 500, that was the size that the user set for the work units and then you agglomerate it on top of that. Yeah. Is yes. that correct? Okay. Yes, so correct. in fact the effective packet size, the actual scheduled work might have been much larger. Right. I actually yeah I should have included that graph of what that okay. is. Yeah. Okay. I guess any other questions? Okay. Uh, right. I think that brings us to the end of the session.